America, we're the great melting pot. We love to celebrate how diverse we think our circles are. But a close look at a new study on the state of diversity in New Jersey finds that our exposure to people who don't necessarily look like us depends on where we are at any given part of the day. The main finding? The workplace is a far more diverse place than where people live. So New Jersey is clearly a melting pot, but when you look at the numbers, people are much more likely to engage with people from different backgrounds, different walks of life, and the workplace than they do at home. 86% overall, in fact, according to the poll. Among millennials 18 to 34, that number is 91%. But when they leave work and head for home, the numbers drop to 64% overall, even among millennials, it falls 14% to 77%. Krista Jenkins runs the FDU Public Mind poll, which conducted the poll in conjunction with the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and Taft Communications. This survey is not the first to find that, you know, people for the most part t do tend to gravitate more to people who are like them when they leave, you know, the kind of forced environment of a workplace. But the study found that the relative diversity of the workplace does not always translate into a comfortable workplace for everybody. Asked whether they had ever heard things in the workplace that might be considered offensive to certain groups. Overall, the numbers from last year to this year stayed the same, slightly down for white people from this year to last, but more than doubled from last year to this year amongst non-whites. Michelle Sikirka is president of the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Because New Jersey is such a diverse state, uh, the importance of people having tolerance to different types of culture in the workplace, understanding how to interact with each other, understanding what's appropriate or not, is very important. And so I was really pleased to see the high numbers of New Jersey businesses that are providing training, number one, uh, and that have good policies in effect that are yielding good results. 78% of workplaces, according to the survey, the result, 86% of workers overall say they feel comfortable reporting discriminatory behavior to their employer. Christopher Irving's company helps employers with diversity training. I think it is a good thing that folks are reporting um, incidents of bias and harassment. The challenge is that many people still don't report incidents of bias and harassment. So the fact that you go from 6% to 12% or you almost double those numbers, um, I think is alarming um, because, you know, what about all the incidents that, uh, that go unreported, that folks don't share and don't talk about. Assemblyman Michael Patrick Carroll, a lawmaker with libertarian leanings, whose dad, in the interest of full disclosure, runs a different polling service, says bunk to all this talk of diversity in the home, in the workplace, wherever. I personally think it's profoundly destructive to be concentrating on things that divide us rather than things that unite us. Uh, we don't, Theodore Roosevelt said it best, there is no room in this country for hyphenated Americans. And that was more than 100 years ago. If you study evolution, you know that the African diaspora began 60,000 years ago or so. We are all African Americans. It's just simply a question of how long ago our ancestors left the old sod. The study doesn't go into the whys behind the numbers, but the pollsters suggest that it provides an opportunity for all of us to look at the disparities between how we see things and act upon them in the workplace and at home. For NJTV News, I'm David Cruz.